I'm looking that way and I'm talking about things. Do I like climate? <laughs> I've forgotten what I wanted to say for an opener. I've been climbing for about nine years now and I've always known climbing's good for you physically. It's good exercise, it keeps you fit. But I've always felt that climbing is really good for your mental health as well. It teaches you a lot of skills like communication, being out of your comfort zone. It also gets you out in nature. When you have other things in your daily life that are worrying you, it can help. Like, I get scared that people don't like me that people find me annoying, that I don't fit in. I get scared that I'm not gonna do anything with my life. But when you're climbing, it's a lot more of a rational thing to be afraid of. So it kind of gives you perspective on smaller things in your life, but actually aren't as big of a deal as you think. I wanted to speak to some other people in the climbing community to see if they've had the same kind of experience. My name's Lauren, and this is my film about climbing and mental health. My name is Phoebe Foster. <laughs> I've been climbing for nine months now. So yeah, I think climbing improves your mental health a lot. It, it gets you out of the house, you build relationships with people built on trust because you're literally trusting them with your life. I'd taken a year out from university and busy life because I'd gotten quite ill all of a sudden and I met someone who fortunately was a climber and and I think it was the first time in a long year that I felt strong and I felt like I could progress in something and it was a really big part of my recovery. I don't think I am particularly a good climber and I don't think my climbing ability is what gets me to the top of most climbs. I think usually it's to do with mind over matter. I'm not particularly strong, my technique isn't very good, I'm not a great climber at all, really. <laughs> but <laughs> I get to the top of things. <laughs> and it's something that you're like constantly challenging yourself. I think that's just such a skill to have, rather than sort of just expecting everything to be doable first off. I've been married before, went through a divorce. Climbing kind of like saved me from going into the pit of depression. Last year, I was diagnosed with cancer and hideous time you you focus on on the climbing and not impending doom i like climbing because it's kind of like dancing you can express yourself with the movement a few years ago i went through a bit of a bad patch where i suffered from depression and anxiety and i definitely found then just being outside i felt so much better I don't know, things just don't seem so bad when you're outside. When you climb with people, they do become like proper friends. There honestly is such a good community of climbers out there, even in lockdown. Because it uses your brain and your body, it's a good distraction. I find climbing outdoors a lot more challenging because when you're in the climbing gym, you have set routes, they've got colours. Whereas when you're climbing outside, you're faced with a rock wall. It's a lot more challenging in terms of pushing yourself, but I think it's really rewarding as well. I think being cooped up in the house, like especially over lockdown, there's a lot of people struggling. Yeah, they need to get back to back to roots and get outside and ride bikes and play. It's fulfilling for the soul, for sure. Black Dog Outdoors are an organisation and they take people who have been maybe having problems with their mental health and introduce them to sports like climbing in order to show them how it can benefit their mental health. I met up with them for the day to speak to some of the people behind Black Dog Outdoors and some of the attendees as well. I was out on a mountaineering trip with a group of people I'd never met before and when we, when we were chatting around the dinner table of what brought us to the mountain, you know, everybody had almost the same answer. Uh, it was the release, it was a the therapy, it was you know, the challenge. I started to do some research whether there's a link between outdoor exercise and, and mental health and found that there is, but couldn't find many places where the two were being promoted together. Yeah, I'm six foot three and I have a plus four ape index, so my wingspan is six foot seven. Oh 
<laughs> so I'm, I'm built for climbing, they say. You, you know when you go climbing that you, your mind's going to have a little break because you've got to focus on the rock. My name's Louise Hall. Um, I'm the climbing officer for Black Dog Outdoors and I'm also the director of Climbing Alongside Mental Health. And today we are holding an outdoor climbing event. People who might be struggling with their mental health or affected by mental illness and just have a nice day outside. My name's Holly, I'm a climbing instructor and what we're doing here like resonates with me quite a lot because of things that I've had with my mental health. I just love bringing people outdoors and showing them the positives of climbing. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me doing this. So I stumbled upon the power climbing competition completely randomly. So I just, just had a go signed myself up on the day. It did really well, came first, and I kind of just wanted to, to promote the fact that climbing is really good for your mental health. So I went back the next year, and then unfortunately the third year they'd removed the mental health category from the paraclimbing series. And that was a decision that was down to the IFSC. They decided that that shouldn't be a legitimate category. It was kind of disappointing because I wanted to keep promoting mental health and climbing. Thankfully now we get to do it through Black Dog Outdoors. Well, the thing I like about climbing is that, you know, I have a stressful job um, and climbing I find is a really great way to get away from that. The, the focus and the attention on, on the climbing, on the route, just, you can't think about work while you're climbing. It's impossible, I've tried. <laughs> My name's Lee. Today's been brilliant. I found it more like a puzzle solving thing rather than the physical strain of pulling yourself up a rock face. The problem solving's been Probably the most interesting and unexpected part of this. Yeah, definitely going home with a smile on me first. My name's Tess. I've absolutely loved today. Yeah, being outside, being active, but also something that you're like really focused on. For me, it's just perfect. Yeah. And I think even though climbing's really social, you you are doing it because you want to do it. Because you want to do it, even if you're in pain or your, your fingers are killing you, or your shoes are starting to wear through. I think it's a nice way of thinking about life in general. Is it? you should just kind of go for your goals. People have been wanting to get outside but haven't necessarily had the skills or there have been other barriers throughout this lockdown period and people are realising maybe more the importance of being outside. I had a terrible year last year, but I, I, I climbed a lot, I did a lot of photography. I think anything that involves you doing a certain thing where that's all you're thinking about is an amazing thing to combat mental health. Support from the community and friends, it's all helped massively keep me going and, and give me stuff to look forward to. I could talk about how climbing is really good for you physically and mentally but I think one thing people need to be aware of is it's not always the most accessible sport to get into. There are a lot of people in the climbing community that aren't represented as much mainly because of their situation or backgrounds. A lot of people who have low income they find it harder to get into climbing and as a result of that a lot of people who are ethnic minorities don't have as much involvement. That is why events like what Black Dog Outdoors have been doing is really important because it introduces the sport to people who might not ever have the skills or even the opportunity to take up climbing otherwise. There are other organisations I've found that specifically try and make it more accessible to BAME groups, so Black, Asian or ethnic minority, and information about them I'll put at the end of the video just so that it's nice and easy to find. Mental health is still just such a mystery, even to the people that experience mental health problems. It's also a matter of communication. How do you tell someone else, particularly if they haven't been experiencing mental health problems? How do you articulate to them feelings that you can barely admit to yourself sometimes? People are still quite keen to keep their mental health to themselves, which is obviously problematic if you're suffering with mental health issues. It's really important to talk about them. Toxic masculinity is a big talking point. Um, if you want to get deep about it, male suicide is, is ridiculous. Um, because guys just don't feel like th they can really talk about their feelings much. I think things are improving as far as tackling the stigma attached to mental health. The main issue, I'd say, is that for people that personally have never had a mental health problem, I don't think it's easy for them to understand what it feels like. Feeling depressed is like very different to just feeling sad or having like an off day. Some people don't understand 
as easily that it's like an ongoing health condition. You can't see it physically, so a lot of people won't believe that you actually have it. People don't realise and, you know, they think you can just cheer up or just shrug it off, but actually you can't, because if you could, you would. The problem at the moment with mental health, I think that actually a lot of the solutions could be applied to how we kind of view society and failure. Once you realise that you can fail at climbing, because actually most people fail, like, all the time, it does make that okay in, like, real life. I think the stigma is slowly reducing. I think there's a lot of really good, really strong campaigns out there to try and destigmatise mental health. I still don't think it's fully understood at some levels, but there's also a hell of a lot of good intent out there. People do realise that it's an increasing problem and, you know, we're all, we're all human beings. We all want to look out for each other. Mindfulness is basically when you put yourself in the present, you focus on things going on right then around you. And that can be really helpful because a lot of the time people worry about things that have either happened in the past or worry about things that haven't happened yet, so in the future. And ultimately, the only thing we really have control over is what's happening now. And that can be quite similar to what climbing does for you, because when you're climbing, you're really putting yourself in the present and thinking about what you're doing, what's going on right then. In order to actually practice mindfulness, you can just focus more on what's going on around you and take the time to look at things going on. There's, there's your action shot right there. Yeah. Wonderful. called Chris who climbs on the moor and he's the local vicar in one of the villages. Forgotten it, so <laughs> that was. <laughs> oh, yeah.